Kyle Larson versus Daniel Suarez in, well... Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. We just came off our first NASCAR Cup Series race in Iowa, and hand up, I didn't think it was going to be a very good race because of that partial repave with the bottom two lanes, but apparently I'm just not familiar with NASCAR and ISC's game because we've been so absolutely scarred by the SMI repaves that the ISC repave of Iowa, well partial, was actually really good. I think all of us, including drivers, thought it was going to be a bottom feeder race, and it was the exact opposite of that. You had multiple lanes, which was phenomenal, well, two lanes, but it still made for a very intriguing Xfinity race and a very intriguing NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday as well. I think one of the biggest storylines coming out of the weekend, though, is going to be the Daniel Suarez-Kyle Larson uh, crash, and we can take a look at it real quick here. Essentially what happened at the start of stage three, 132 laps to go in the race, Kyle Larson forces his way three wide going into turn three, and he has Brad Keselowski on the top, himself in the middle, Daniel Suarez on the bottom, kind of in the middle of an orange sandwich, and honestly, that sounds disgusting, I would never want a sandwich with oranges on it. Regardless, he gets stuck in the middle right there. Suarez, there's plenty of room, right? You can see that on either side of the cars. Uh, there's enough room in there for everybody to exist in this space. Unlike Costco, where you go and stand around and somebody runs into you with your cart and you're like, I apologize for existing in this space right here. I'm sorry you don't have eyes because when people get in Costco, they lose their ever living minds. That's not what happened here. Everybody was seemingly adhering to each other's space. Then Daniel Suarez gets loose, catches it, and unfortunately, corrects into Kyle Larson, takes out the fastest car of the race. I mean, a car was so fast, even Cliff Daniels acknowledged it when Kyle Larson was mad at Denny Hamlin and was like, listen, we're going to let that Denny Hamlin thing go. We had the fastest car here by a ridiculous amount. And he's right. I mean, the guy drove from 32nd to 5th in like, I don't know, 40 laps. It was absolutely insane. Definitely had the fastest car there. Gets taken out by Suarez. And that's essentially the end of his day. They went back and repaired the car, brought it back out. But he was, of course, multiple laps down, not in contention at all. So the thing about this is, is the track house don't give an F tour now expanding to include multiple acts, not only Ross Chastain, but now Daniel Suarez. No, not so fast. Essentially what happened here was just a racing incident is what it came down to. Daniel Suarez got loose on the bottom and from his onboard camera, you hear him. You can hear him get loose. He gets off throttle, gets back on throttle to try to catch it and then just hits the five car. And I saw a lot of people on the internet being like, well, Kyle Larson forced his way in there. If he didn't do that, then Daniel Suarez doesn't hit him. Well, okay, fair. If there's no other cars on track, there's never an, uh, an incident where cars run into each other. So it's kind of a nonsensical point to say that. Yes, yeah, Suarez did get loose. Suarez did make contact with the five. It wasn't malicious. It was a racing incident. And should Kyle Larson have handled that better and not have gone three wide? Maybe, you know, lived a fight another day getting to the next corner. Absolutely. And he kind of acknowledged that in his post-race interview where he's like, yeah, you know, looking back on it, maybe I should have just stayed in six through the rest of the corner and then tried to pick him off going under the next lap or, you know, subsequent laps after that. Even Daniel Suarez in his post-race interview, uh, in the heat of the moment, he came over the radio afterwards and was like, that's what happens when you try to force it three wide. Well, it's not that he forced it three wide. There's plenty of space there. It was just maybe guys trying to stay off the wall. And Daniel watched the replay and he was like, yeah, he's like, I made contact with the five. He's like, I pushed up into him. He's like, I think that maybe the six was trying to pinch the five down. The five was maybe trying to pinch me down. And essentially just becomes a racing incident. And I think that's absolutely what it is. No ill will between either of them. Daniel even pointed out, he's like, I would hate, I don't want to take out a Chevy teammate of mine, right? Obviously, Trackhouse does have a history of run-ins with Hendrick Motorsports, so much so that last year, Justin Marks and Ross Chastain had to go over to Hendrick Motorsports, kiss the ring of the Don Rick Hendrick, and ask for forgiveness. And obviously, clemency was granted. And now we've seen Ross Ch Chastain kind of come out of his shell a little bit. You had multiple guys on Sunday night at Iowa complaining about Ross Chastain, and then Daniel Suarez goes out and does that zane smith even uh got you know, kind of stacked up there and spun his own teammate out and he's on loan from track house so the track house trio on sunday night was feeling a little frisky but i don't think the suarez and larson incident was anything more than just as charles leclerc would say just an incident so yeah it is what it is uh, one thing i don't want to see I saw some people on Twitter last night sending hate messages at Daniel Suarez. Absolutely don't do that. Don't become the Augustine Canapino of NASCAR fans. We don't need to have that in the sport. So, yeah, racing incidents happen. Sucks that the fastest car got taken out. The rest of the race at Iowa, though, was absolutely fantastic. There were a couple questionable caution calls, like Angel Hernandez was up in the race control. But other than that, you had multiple lanes. You had tire wear 
Although, I would say that the left side tires probably need to wear a little bit more, but we had obviously had a number of right side tire issues. Noah Gragson got hunted down by his old car that just wanted to remind him that I guess it was still on the racetrack. NASCAR threw a quick caution for that after John Hunter Nemechek ran into the 10 car. Didn't actually make any contact with anything, but I think they saw a car spinning and threw it. I can get behind that. Eric Jones cut a tire down, kind of limped around, and then had to make this mad dash across traffic like he was playing frogger no caution for that daniel hemrick does the same thing touches the wall caution came out for that during a pit cycle which sent christopher bell's crew chief adam stevens ballistic for a second on the radio but i think that might be the only questionable thing because the rest of the race was phenomenal i'd probably give it a solid i don't know 87 i honestly think that they should repave the rest of the racetrack now i saw some people being like oh should they leave it how it is uh, I think after the IndyCar race, they need to go and repave the upper lanes there and the front stretch and I guess the back stretch at that point, because uh, with the new repave, I think that they'll be able to run up to the wall and down at the bottom because it is progressive banking at the end of the day. I think it could make for a very compelling race um, next year when they return. So overall, absolutely loved it. You had the Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin incident when Larson put uh, Hamlin a lap down there and Denny ran into the back of him, kind of sent him off the track. Well, Larson didn't put him a lap down. He was already lapped down. And he just came over the radio and he was like, what the F was that? And then under the caution after that, he told his spotter, he's like, go down and ask Lambert, Denny Hamlin's spotter, what the F that was for. And Cliff Daniels, for being only 35, is maybe the biggest and best motivator out there. The guy is the most level-headed person out there. He's like, no, we're going to let that go. It was unfortunate that it happened, this and that. He's like, we have the fastest car here by a ridiculous amount. We're just going to look forward at this point. And Kyle was just like, okay, fair enough. So Cliff Daniels has a great job of keeping everybody level-headed. Good for him. And I think you need to have somebody like that on top of the box because he knew how good that car was for the five team. Ryan Blaney ends up winning the race. He holds off William Byron there. He goes on to win the race. He has 80 family members there. His mom is from Des Moines, uh, not far from Newton, Iowa, where Iowa Speedway is located. Overall, like I said, pretty good race, top to bottom. You had multiple lanes. We don't have any historic data to base anything off of, so I'm not going to really give out stat numbers for passing because, well, we don't know if it was better than what we saw last year. But at the end of the day, you saw a number of passes, on-track passes for position. We did not hear anything about error, which was so refreshing. And maybe the answer to short track package is a 7 8 mile racetrack, which I would argue that is not a short track. That is the smallest intermediate track that we go to, uh, which I think is fine. I think they should adopt kind of that that identity for iowa speedway i hope they go back next year i absolutely hope they go back um we need to see that hawkeyes car back there with Corey lajoy because he made it three laps so in very iowa fashion three laps before something happened three points is what iowa seems to average right now zane smith punted him like he was uh, angel reese so overall really good racing top to bottom would love to see it go back you had a number of incidents on track the tires obviously blistered because they're going about a second faster than what goodyear expected them to do uh maybe work that in potentially bring a softer tire especially for the left side honestly i don't think the tire issues were even that big of a a deal on sunday i think everybody kind of knew the parameters to be within there and if you pushed it like that's what you would end up with and at one point, I thought we were going to get our first Josh Berry NASCAR Cup Series win. He and Rodney Childers had that number four car flying. But on the final pit stop, they decided to take four tires. The leaders decided, or not the leaders, they were at the front there. Every, a couple other people decided to take two tires, that being Blaney and others. And that ended up being the winning call. Josh kind of got stuck back in traffic, comes home P7. Not indicative of how fast that race car was. He looked really stout on Sunday night. He led 32 laps. Ryan Blaney led 201, and Kyle Larson led 80 laps um, total in that race. Overall, like I said, let's go back to Iowa Speedway next year. I think Richmond's going to end up losing one of their dates, and this is a pretty good supplement for that, and it was a perfect summer race. Maybe start it an hour earlier so that you don't really run into twilight and let the track cool off a little bit, let the track stay hot, which made for a pretty interesting race. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Suarez Larson incident as well as the rest of the race that we saw on Sunday. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.